Uh, you know, uh, ever finish a book and thought back on all the little hints the author left you? That's the magic of foreshadowing. That's what I'm saying. Because today uh, is all about building suspense, suspense, suspensions, uh, building suspense, a guide to effective foreshadowing techniques. Because uh, we're going to dive into basically the art of foreshadowing as a technique itself. Now, why is that important? Well, sometimes, you know, mastering foreshadow can transform your writing by adding layers of anticipation and depth that keeps readers engaged and invested in your story. Thomas, what is foreshadowing? Uh, you know what? Foreshadowing is a literary device that evolves, uh, uh, or I should say involves, I'm sorry. Foreshadowing is a literary device that involves, involves my accent. I'm so sorry. Foreshadowing is a literary device that involves hinting at future events in your story, providing subtle clues that prepare readers for what's to come without revealing too much. Uh, a little caveat. Uh, I talk about seeding a lot. Seeding is not the same as foreshadowing. Foreshadowing has the distinct purpose of leading your reader to a certain point uh, where seeding is providing enough context uh, and uh, for reveals or uh, to earn things. Uh, you don't want somebody to have the ability of magic, but you want to seed the concept that magic exists. Uh, so showing them being capable of something is a form of seeding, uh, you know, the reveal of information. If you want somebody to be revealed as the prince or the princess of the, the kingdom, uh, seeding would be showing that they have some sort of line from A to B that says, oh, they are indeed uh, the princess. Foreshadowing would uh, lead people to believe uh, that they are uh, going to be found out that they are the princess. But we're going to go into a big and deep. Uh, the first thing I like to do is some tips before we go into uh, real-time walkthroughs and working through the process, just so you kind of get uh, a starting point. Um, of where and when and what and uh, how and the uh, day, the day, the day. And uh, the first, the first tip is effective use of foreshadowing. Uh, you know, listen, you want to introduce subtle, subtle hints through dialogue, setting, details, or uh, symbolic elements early in the story that pay off later. Balance the subtlety of your foreshadowing to avoid making it too obvious or too obscure. You know, that's the short of it. But the long of it is that you want to look at the techniques of foreshadowing. You know, the things like incorporate uh, foreshadowing through various narrative elements, such as the dialogue where a seemingly offhand comment can hint at future events. Using setting details like storm clouds or the horizon to foreshadow trouble or symbolic elements such as a broken mirror to suggest forthcoming misfortune. As you can see, just with that alone, it is different than seeding. Seeding is, uh, you know, if I really like Diet Pepsi, um, you know, maybe the first scene uh, where I'm introduced is I'm aggravated that I'm out of soda. Right. I need to get soda. OK. And, uh, you know, but we don't know what flavor I like. And then later on, somebody's like, do you want do you want some beer? And they go, nah, I'm not. A, I don't like beer. And like, what do you want? I was like, you know, honestly, if you had a Diet Cherry Pepsi and now you're like, oh, yeah, that's because the character likes soda because we, they were upset that the, that's obviously a very simplified version of seating. Uh, but foreshadowing has more of a narrative uh, foretelling or um, uh, manipulation of the emotional truth that is to present itself. For example, uh, you know, you know, oh, man, uh, you know, the worst thing that could ever happen to us is if one of us lost our legs. And then what happens? Somebody loses their leg. Right. The other thing is you want to think about integration, you know, like how to weave these hints naturally into the narrative so that they enhance the story without drawing undue attention to themselves. They should fit seamlessly, seamlessly into the context of the scene, contributing to the atmosphere and depth. You know, you don't want to uh, foreshadow be like, uh, you know, uh, I hope none of us lose our legs <laughs> because we're about to go into a thing that will cut our legs off. Uh, if we trip and fall and, uh, you know, we're laying down now, it will, we, one of us is definitely, you know, probably you, Sam, right? Like that's, that's not natural, you know? Uh, but anyway, you also want to avoid, um, 
the the obvious the obviousness of it you know you know foreshadowing is too transparent it uh, can give away the plot twist per, uh, prematurely uh, robbing the story of its suspense and surprise now obviously you know you're striving for a level of subtlety uh, that keeps the reader guessing doesn't mean you can't be like they're gonna lose their legs you know you can be like straight you know bob uh you're destined to lose your legs i i have foreseen it like you could do that you're it's your story right but also uh you you don't want to prevent obscurity you know foreshadowing is too subtle uh it may go unnoticed rendering it ineffective it should be clear enough that in hindsight readers can see how the pieces fit together leading to an aha moment number two when not to use foreshadowing you know avoid the short of it avoid foreshadowing when it disrupts the narrative flow or when it makes the plot predictable do not use it if it doesn't add any significant value to the story development or reader experience now the long of it Avoid inserting foreshadowing that feels forced or irrelevant to the scene at hand, as it can disrupt the narrative flow and distract the reader from the immediate story. Because if foreshadowing makes the plot's future too predictable, consider it its use. You know, the goal is to maintain a balance between hinting at a future which develops naturally and keeping the story engaging and suspenseful. And honestly, it should uh, be a valued addition, you know. Not only should you use foreshadowing uh, uh, for the suspense and tension, but if it adds significant value to the story development or enhances the reader's experience, if it serves no purpose in advancing the plot or deepening of the reader's engagement, it might be best to leave it out. Number three, a common mistake. Oh, common mistakes in foreshadowing. You know, the short of it is make the hints too uh, blatant, you know, making them too blatant, you know, which that will spoil the suspense. But using foreshadow that leads nowhere creates reader frustration and also uh, you lose um, credibility. They don't believe the things you present. So what is the long of it? Well, avoid making foreshadow too obvious as it can spoil the surprise foreshadowing should not feel like a giveaway rather it should be a puzzle piece that readers can look back on with satisfaction for its clever integration the idea that a foreshadowing uh, event could be unfulfilled especially if they are putting the dots together you know and then you want to ensure that all instances of foreshadowing lead somewhere significant foreshadowing that leads nowhere can frustrate readers and diminish their trust in the story's direction and the author's storytelling skills. And finally, number four, before we get into the uh, real, real-time uh, examples, testing your foreshadowing. The short of it, ensure that the foreshadowed events are satisfyingly paid off. Review feedback from uh, beta readers to see if they picked up on the hints and if those enhance their reading experience. The long of it, before I go into it, let me just tell you, if you have a beta reader and you're specifically looking uh, or make, want to make sure that people are foreseeing things to come, a nice little question you can add is, uh, where where do you think, what do you think is going to happen? You know, so every couple of chapters you could ask that. Uh, well, if you're doing beta readers, you're, you're asking questions. I like to ask questions in batches. So I'll send them several chapters and then ask them overall questions uh, based on those chapters, not specifically for each chapter, but in general. Um, so even then, you could be like, where based on these chapters, where do you think the story is going? What do you think is going to happen? Like, you don't have to lead them with specifics. Be like, what do you think about Jim and his legs? You know? But you can you can see if because now they'll think about it like oh what where do I think and maybe they subconsciously answer it you know uh, they consciously subconsciously answer it meaning they have foreseen those foreshadowing elements but they may not have you know consciously seen those elements but your storytelling subtly sub subtly leaked into their perception of it the other thing is when you're getting uh, that feedback uh, you know. Uh, let's get into the long of it. So when it comes to testing your foreshadow, you want to check that all foreshadowed elements are satisfactorily resolved in the narrative. 
Each hint should build towards payoff that feels rewarding and integral to the overall story arc, right? Feedback from beta readers will uh, help you basically understand what's going on. The other thing you could do with the beta readers is after the book is done, you can directly ask them, did you see that coming? Did it feel like there were hints for it? You know, and it, but wait till they're done reading the book. And then if they say no or yeah, if they say yeah, do you go, well, what elements, you know, like ask quite follow up questions, you know? So before we get into the walkthrough, uh, if you're enjoying this lesson and uh, other lessons such as this one and you want more and you haven't done so already, please like, comment and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out. All right, let's get into it. Scenario, yeah, yeah, yeah. Boop. There we go. Scenario, all right. So the first thing we notice with the scenario, okay, is... Uh, eh. do, 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 do. Boop. All right, we're going to... This is where we're at. So Sarah is uh, is a nervous flyer, but she must board a plane to visit her family across the country. So the example of the scenario will be Sarah nervously clutched her boarding pass, her heart hammering against her ribs. Right. So. Uh, as an example, this uh, scenario sets the stage for a journey, but it lacks suspense. So uh, basically, we want to see how do we add foreshadowing to this, okay? So right now, it's just Sarah nervously clutched her boarding pass, her heart hammering against her ribs. All right, so let's see. How do we add suspense to this? Um, let's go to methods uh, to foreshadow. The first one is going to be dialogue, okay? Dialogue. You know, uh, something we could say is maybe uh, Sarah hugged her mom goodbye. A tremor in her voice. Uh, I'll be fine, she promised. Uh, but promise me you'll call me the second the plane lands okay and then uh then we add a little something something uh, her mom's uh i don't know smile faltered for a brief moment uh a flicker of worry crossing her eyes of course but airplanes are very safe these days oh man we're really snapping her all right so this subtle exchange between sarah you know and her mother is uh ultimately we are getting a glimpse into the deeper anxieties you know of sarah uh, about the flight and uh, hopefully it piques the uh the reader's interest but um she hugged her mom with a tremor's voice so we know we are showing okay 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 all right, that's from uh, Lethal Weapon 3 with uh, uh, Joe, uh, Joe Pesci. Okay, anyway, okay. Uh, Sarah hugged her mom goodbye, a tremor in a voice. Now, we already show, we're showing, we're showing that she is nervous, okay? All right, and then uh, I'll be fine, she promised. Uh, but, uh, but promise me you'll call me the second the plane lands, right? All right, um... Uh, I'll be fine. She hugged her mom goodbye. A tremor in a voice. Okay. Okay. So Sarah is the one saying, uh, but promise me you'll call me the second the plan leads. So this is foreshadowing the potential that the plane might not, might not land safely. And then her mom smiles, faltered for a brief moment. Cause I'm like, oh, you know what? Maybe she also doesn't have a lot of faith in the plane like there's a small little hesitation in the back of her mind so she's just like of course honey but airplanes are very safe so she's trying to reassure herself you know what i'm saying i don't know i don't make this stuff all right method number two set setting uh setting details okay uh all right 
let's see. Uh, this has to be more environmental. This is environmental. So this is the setting, right? So uh, I don't know. Uh, the departure. Departure. Or this plane. A string of canceled flights due to thunderstorm which is interesting because there's a thunderstorm happening uh right now as i'm filming this um sarah swallowed hard the knot in her stomach tightening okay so why is why is this method uh, so you know by the way if we added for the record if we added this right uh, but let's say Sarah, uh, uh, I'll be fine. So Sarah's like, oh no, right? Um, do 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 Sarah hugged her mom goodbye. A tremor in her voice. I'll be fine. Okay. This is not very clear. By the way, every first draft needs a second draft, right? <laughs> Sarah hugged her mom goodbye, a tremor in her voice. Uh, her mother's voice. I'll be fine, she promised. But uh, See, I don't like promise twice. She said, but promise me you'll call me the second the plane lands. Her mom's smile faltered before. Da, 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 da. Sarah hugged her mom goodbye. A tremor in her voice. Okay, okay, okay. I'll fine. I'll be fine. She said, but promise me. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I, I, I understand why. I know why I'm messing up because in the first example, Sarah is saying goodbye to the mom who is flying, and then I, I made a, I kept Sarah in my head. Uh, but this is really supposed to be Sarah's mom, so. Uh, I don't like that. I want Sarah to be the person. So uh, let's see. Uh, she hung. Uh, I'll be fine. Uh, but uh, okay, she said. Okay. Uh, let's just have her mom say, "Promise me you'll call. You'll call me. Promise. 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 You'll call me the second the plane lands." Her mom smiled. Her mom smiled. Her mom smile. Faltered for a brief moment, a flicker of worry crossing her, and then, uh, of course, of course, mother, mommy, mom, planes. Are safe these days, right? Okay, that's better. That's I, that's tighter. Okay. Uh, yeah. She hugged her mom goodbye. A tremor in her voice. I'll be fine. She said, "Promise you'll call." Um, uh, promise me you'll call me. Okay. All right. Excellent. Okay. Now Sarah can be the one boarding the plane. Let's go back to the setting. So the depart, uh, the departure boarded. Uh, board displayed a string of canceled flights due to the thunderstorm sarah swallowed hard <laughs> the knot in her stomach tightening all right so what is the purpose of this well you know obviously we are foreshadowing uh wait a minute yeah, we are foreshadowing uh the complications of the weather so not only did we foreshadow before we get to this uh the dialogue is suggesting that they're not even sure themselves of the situation and then that situation is in is a heightened uh, with uh, with an actual storm. Okay. Uh, so you can see the screen better. All right. As I write, let's see. Uh, we could make it a little crazier. Let's add a little... Uh, uh, I like horror horror elements. So uh, maybe, maybe a, a, a teddy bear, right? So let's see. Uh, specifically, a worn teddy bear. Yeah. <laughs> A childhood comfort uh, that peaked out of Sarah's Sarah's backpack, right? Uh, as she uh, 
Okay. Um, okay. Let's say uh, a warm, a warm teddy bear, uh, a warm teddy bear, childhood comfort. Even at her, even, even now in her teen age years, uh, peeked out of Sarah's backpack. All right, and then we could say uh, she clutched it. She clutched. Clutched is a nice word. She clutched it tight. Uh, I guess tightly would be grammatically. She clutched it tightly. She clutched it in her uh, uh, delicate confidence. Uh, that uh, measured a silent plea <laughs> for reassurance. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. That's that's a little dark and scary, but it is a thriller. Okay. So uh, a worn teddy bear, a child of comfort even now in her teenage years, peeked out of Sarah's backpack. She clutched it in her delicate confidence that measured a silent plea for resistance, reassurance. All right, that's pretty sexy. All right, so all this is saying something is probably going to go wrong. By the way, I just want to go back up here because I was thinking while I was writing. Um, promise you'll, uh, you'll okay, in, in dialogue, right, to create, di I know this has nothing to do with dialogue, but uh, since we're here. Um, promise you'll call me the second of the plane lands. Uh, grammatically, this isn't necessarily correct. It would be promise me that you'll call me. But please know you have a uh, a, a much larger uh, area for play when it comes to dialogue because dialogue will create character. You know, I could easily just be like, uh, damn girl. Yeah. Even I'm worried. Uh, so promise. So, so promise. So promise me. Uh, promise me the first thing uh, you do when you land. Is give me a ring. All right. Okay. You know. Oh, the first thing. Thing. Oh, there's no comment. All right. So, uh, damn girl, even I'm worried. Now, this is a mother, so just keep in mind. <laughs> just think about that for a second. How drastically that changes the character, knowing it's the mother, and she's like, damn girl, even I'm worried. So, promise me the first thing you do when you land is give me a ring. You know, it's so casual and comfortable that, like, the energy is so weird. You know, it, again, I might write that and be like, does it feel emotionally right? because it doesn't have empathy to it. It's, it's very disconnected. But just as an example, you know, like, you don't have to, I mean, give me a ring, you know, that's slang, you know, the, 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 the fact that it's broken up and there's just, uh, you know, anyway. All right, so we have all the examples, okay? Which brings us to, where's my, boom, a written scenario. Okay, let's see what we get. I know we did some writing scenarios here, but... Uh, Let's see. Let's see. Uh, all right. So the goal is to uh, to kind of put it all together uh, into one thing. Uh, I'm not going to use this version. I'm going to use the other version. Let's see. Uh, see if I can... uh, well, let's let's uh, open the intro. Let's create the intro. So. Uh, did I write uh, today was the day she had to fly <laughs> across the country to visit her family. A family? What the hell's a family? Family, her mom. Uh, hug, hug goodbye. Right? Uh, a tremor. In Sarah's voice, mm, I'll be fine, she said. And then, uh, oh, mommy, mommy said something like, "Promise, promise you'll call me the second. 
the plain lands. All right, and then uh, her uh, mom's smile faltered for a brief moment. Oh, brief moment, a flicker of worry crossing her eyes. All right, and then uh, then she's gonna be like, "Of course, Mama. Of course, Mom. Uh, planes are very safe. Mm -hmm. Right, Chris. Chris, planes are very safe. Mm -hmm. Very safe." Uh, these days, uh, you want to cut the loan for me, Chris? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, uh, because we already, I, I had to rewrite the beginning. But, all right. Uh, let's see. Boop, doop, 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 doop. So there we go. I'm actually going to bring this down so we could look at it uh, without the interruption. All right. So there you go. There's a hundred. Today was the day she had to fly across the country to visit a family. Uh, her mom hugged her goodbye in the middle of uh, the airport. Uh, they stood just before uh, the check-in. I know the... Uh, uh, what do they call that spot? <clears throat> Where they make you walk through a, a metal detector. See, I don't know. Oh, the security here. Duh. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, today was the day she had to fly across. The Her mom hugged her goodbye in the middle of the airport. They stood just before, uh, just before the security. Security. I can't spell. Security area. A subtle, huh? A subtle tremor. Uh, dressed, uh, dressed over Sarah's voice. Mm, okay, this, this I would do this. Okay, today was the day she had to fly across the country to visit her family. Her mom hugged her goodbye in the middle of the airport. They stood just before the security area. All right. Uh, a subtle tremor just over Sarah's voice. I'll be fine, she said. Promise you'll call me the second the plan leads. Her mom's smile faltered for a brief moment, a flicker of worry across her eyes. <laughs> okay. uh, of course, mom. Planes are very safe these days, right? Okay. Uh, they glanced. Uh, wait, wait, wait. <clears throat> okay. Her mother. Um, nodded with a kind assurance. Kind of a sh a kind assurance to her daughter. Uh, they glanced up. At the departure board. At the same time. As if to distract. From their true. Worry. Okay. Uh, but. Okay. They glanced up. Oh. They. Uh, at the same time, they glanced, they glanced away toward the departure board, mm, as if to distract, as if to distract from their true worry. It displayed a string of canceled flights due to the thunderstorms. Now this would uh, this would actually have to go like this. Why? Oh, you're probably asking Thomas why. And the reason is uh, because this is actually from someone else's POV. This is her mom nodded with a kind assurance to her daughter. At the same time, they glanced away toward the depart departure board as if to distract from the true worry. Um, it displayed a string of canceled flights due to the thunder. Okay, so. Um, 
this is this is all this is all from uh, her mother's POV. And then once we're into Sarah swallowed hard, then because now we're inside Sarah's POV experience, she's swallowing hard because the knot in her stomach. We're feeling through her. We're feeling the story through her. Anyway, uh, a warm teddy bear, a childhood comfort, even now. Uh, in her teenage years, peeked out of Sarah's backpack. I, I could do this. Uh, Sarah's backpack. Uh, her soul seemed uh, to show itself as she clutched. Clutched. The back. In her delicate confidence that measured his silent plea for reasons. Okay, there you go. All right. And there is foreshadowing. Whoo! Writing these things in real time. <laughs> anyway. As you can see, uh, hopefully you're recognizing that the foreshadowing is uh, basically there through the dialogue and the setting and the symbolism. And uh, everybody's uneased, you know? Anyway. If you have questions, let me know in the comments below. But I have a question for you. Can you think of a moment in a book where you realized an early detail was foreshadowing? How did it impact your reading experience? Let us know in the comments below. Before we get to the final thoughts, please subscribe, comment, uh, like, uh, share the video, and uh, remember to hit the bell icon when you subscribe so you don't miss out. Final thoughts. Foreshadowing is a strategic, a strategic tool in your storytelling arsenal. It's not just about dropping hints. It's about crafting a narrative that engages readers, piques their curiosity, and keeps them turning the pages. Effective foreshadowing weaves an undercurrent of anticipation and tension throughout your story, enriching the reader's experience. When used effectively, foreshadowing can enhance narrative cohesion and give your story a layered complexity. It allows you to connect the beginning of your story to the end in a way that feels both surprising oh, and inevitable. Mm -hmm. This connection can make the difference between a good story and a great one. <laughs> as it shows a mastery of narrative structure and pacing. Am I right? Okay. Foreshadowing can significantly increase the emotional impact of your story's key elements by layering groundwork early on. You set up emotional payoffs that are more intense and satisfying. When readers realize that earlier subtle clues had led to major revelations, they feel a deeper connection to the narrative and a greater investment in the character's journey. And this is because when you use foreshadowing to turn readers into detectives, it allows them to actively engage with the text to piece together clues you've laid out. This engagement makes the reading experience more in, uh, interactive, and fun, and it can transform passive readers into active participants who are more likely to appreciate the craft beyond your writing. Achieving the right balance uh, in foreshadowing is crucial. It requires practice, intuition, and feedback. What? Okay, so don't be discouraged if you don't get it right the first time. Use feedback from your readers and your own critical analysis to refine your technique. Foreshadowing should be subtle enough to uh, not be obtrusive. Okay? 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 But clear enough to be recognized in <laughs> hindsight. Like any other writing skill, mastering foreshadow takes practice. So continue to experiment with different techniques, learn from each story you write, and refine your ability to drop hints that lead to rewarding revelations. Each piece you write offers a new opportunity to enhance your skills. So keep learning uh, and experimenting with foreshadowing and other literary devices. Because the more tools you master, the more effective your com and compelling are your story storytelling skills. Uh, I also want to add, uh, foreshadowing doesn't just have to be for uh, mysteries or noirs. It could be for thrillers, like the example I gave. It could be for a love story. Foreshadowing is just a really nice way of just telling your audience, look, you're in on it too. That's what I'm saying. Next video in this series will allow us to go over character arcs. Ensure that your characters experience growth, change, or transformation over the course of the novel. So I will show you not only what character arcs are, but a nice way to kind of, uh, hey, how do I uh, do a character arc? I guess that's it.
Oh, man. Woo. Time to take a break. All right. As always, uh, peace and harmony, truth in action, and keep developing the right mindset. I'll see you next time. Okay, bye. I love you.